All right, going to get started here on homework for section 3.3. Uh, yeah, make sure I'm in the right place. So we're going to do some differentiation of logs. So the general idea here is that if you have, uh, let's say, log of u, that the derivative is 1 over u. Oh, sorry, I forgot to put the base here, log base a of u. Um, derivative is 1 over u natural log a times, now chain rule says I need to now t take the derivative of what was in here, what was in the log, so that would be the derivative of u, so u prime. Another way you could write this is u prime over u natural log a. Now a is always going to be a number in the problem the base of the log, so natural log of a there, that's just a number, um, right? Um, a is a number, so when you take natural log of a number, you should get a number. Okay, so that's what I'm going to be using. Also, keep in mind that if we have a very special case where we have a natural log of u, the derivative of that is 1 over u. Um, the base of the natural log is actually e, so that's really like, rewrite that, that's really log base e of u. That's what that really is. So using the formula I just gave you, that would be 1 over u natural log e, and then times the derivative of u. But natural log of e is 1, and therefore you just get u prime over u. So that's the special case where we are trying to take deriv derivative of natural log. All right, so let's let's take a look here. Um, for this problem, I have chain rule says I have to look at trying to take the log, the derivative of log of something in here, which we will call u. The derivative of that is one over u. So for us, u is actually x to the six plus seven times natural log of whatever the base was, so 10, then times the derivative of the u, so the derivative of what was in here. The derivative of what's in there is 6x to the fifth, and then plus the derivative of 7, which is 0, so we just get 6x to the fifth. And then we can just put this on top of this, and you get the answer right here. The next one we want to differentiate this function. What, what we want to see here is we have subtraction separating two terms. So there's one term, there's another term. The first term has a product right here, so we have to apply the product rule. The derivative of 3x is actually just 3, then times the second function, natural log 6x. Continuing the product rule plus the derivative of natural log of something is 1 over that something, then times the derivative of what's inside, derivative of 6x is 6, then finishing off the product rule times 3x, and that finishes off the derivative of this first piece here. Now we want to say minus the derivative of 3x, which is just 3. So cleaning this all up, we have the um, 3 natural log of 6x, and then here, let's see what happens. We get our x's to cancel. We get our 6's to cancel. We just get a 3. But then we come in here and we subtract 3. And 3 minus 3 is 0. So this is the only thing left. All right, next one. Differentiate the function. So we have chain rule. We have sine. And then inside of that, we have a u. So the derivative of sine of u, right, derivative of sine of u, is just cosine u. So I put cosine of u, but u was actually, let's see, 9 natural log x. Then chain rule says I need to now take derivative of what's inside. Well, 9 is a constant in front, so 9 is just going to be here. And then derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x times the derivative of what's in here, but the derivative of x is just 1. So we really don't even need that. We can just leave it like that. So what we get is, uh, I'll take this 9 out to the front, 9 cosine natural log x over 
on the bottom, the only thing that was left down there is X. Okay. Next. We're taking the derivative chain rule again, natural log of something here. This whole thing is a U. The derivative of natural log of U is 1 over U times U prime. So um, I can, I'm going to do 1 over U, but U is 289 uh, sine squared X, then times the derivative of this. Now 289 is a constant. Times, now be kind of careful here because sine squared X, I have to take derivative of that. That's the same as sine X squared. So what I can do is I can, I can um, when I take derivative, the 2 comes out in front, so 2, then sine x to the first power, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Then I have to do derivative of what's inside, and derivative of what's inside is cosine x. So that should be, I can, I can cancel some stuff here. I can cancel one of these signs, and all that leaves me with is a 2 on top and a cosine, 2 cosine x over just one sine x on the bottom, but cosine over sine is cotangent, so we should just get 2 cotangent x. All right, next. We want to take derivative of 12 over natural log x. There are different ways to do this, but I'm going to use quotient rule just to show you how it would work. Okay, so I have a quotient. I have something on top, something on bottom. So uh, derivative quotient is derivative of the top, derivative of 12 is 0, times the bottom, natural log x, that's not going to matter, minus the derivative of the bottom, derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x, we just did that a second ago, times the top, all over the bottom, natural log x, squared, which gives us, neg this canceled, negative 12 over x, over natural log x, Squared. And then you could um, basically look at that as being over 1 and then flip and multiply. So you get negative 12 over x natural log x squared. Okay, next one. Differentiate. We have product rule between sine and natural log. So I'll do derivative of the first one, which is cosine x, times the second one, natural log 6x plus derivative of the second one. Well, derivative of natural log of something, this is like a u in here, is 1 over that u times the derivative of what's in here. So derivative of 6x is just 6. And then finish the product rule times sine x. 6 is cancel. So I'm left with the first one was, I'll, I'll uh, put cosine x times natural log 6x. And then the only thing left over here was plus sine x over x. Okay, now we have a log. Notice a log base 7. So going back up to when we first started here, the derivative of log base 7 of something is 1 over that something natural log of 7 it would be, and then times the derivative of what was in here. So I'm going to have derivative is 1 over whatever was in there, x e to the x, times natural log 7, times the derivative of what's in here. But what's in there is a product. So I'm going to have to apply the product rule on this. The derivative of the first one is 1 times the second one plus the derivative of the second one. Well, derivative of e to the x is itself times the first one, which is x. So what we get, all of this, can, the whole thing can go on top. So it's just e to the x plus x e to the x, I just changed the order there, over x e to the x natural log 7. Noticing that both uh, terms in the numerator have an e to the x, I can factor it out. Only reason I'm doing that is because I see I have an e to the x on the bottom and I can cancel it here. So I'll be left with 1 plus x over x natural log 7. 
All right, next one. All right, here we have natural log of x times square root x squared um, minus 6. So I'm going to use a couple of properties of logs here. I didn't use it on the last problem, but uh, I could have. You'll, I'll show you this on this one how I'm going to use the property of logs before I differentiate. We have a property that says natural log of u times v is equal to natural log u plus natural log v. That's a college algebra thing. That's not we haven't that's not derivative or anything. So what I want you to see is you have a u times this whole thing is like a v. So I can just rewrite the original problem as natural log x plus natural log square root x squared minus 6. Now we have another property um, that I'm going to use that I can convert that square root into um, taking the square root of x squared minus 6 is the same as raising it to the 1 half. Now the reason I'm doing that is because there's a property that says natural log of something to the n is equal to n times the natural log of that something. So the power can come out. Again, that's a college algebra thing. Um, so this 1 half, I'm going to bring it out. So I'm still rewriting the problem. I haven't taken a derivative. I have natural log x plus 1 half natural log x squared minus 6. And now I'm going to take the derivative. I have two terms separated by addition, so I'll differentiate those one by one. So the derivative is derivative of natural log x is 1 over x plus, now 1 half is a constant, times the, the natural log of u. What's the derivative of natural log of u? It's 1 over u, so x squared minus 6, times the derivative of u. Well, derivative of x squared minus 6 is 2x. And then I can cancel the 2s here, and I'll be left with that 1 over x in the beginning. And then I'll have plus. Uh, the only thing left here, I had an x on top and an x squared minus 6 on bottom. We could get common denominator and put them, to, ooh, and put them together, but uh, I'm not going to. All right, here. Now, this one's a little tricky because you might be tempted to do what I just did, except that you have addition inside here. And we do not have a property that says that natural log of u plus v is equal to anything. So we are we don't have anything to, to, to do as far as a property. So we're just going to have to grind this one out. The derivative of natural log of u is 1 over u, so 1 over x plus square root x squared minus 12 times the derivative of, of u. So what's the derivative of what's in here? Well, this is two terms separated by addition. Derivative of x is 1 plus now derivative of this. That's a chain rule. We want to look at that as being x squared minus 12 to the 1 half. So when we take the derivative, the 1 half will come down. So I'll have 1 half, then I'll have whatever's inside. I subtract 1 from the power, I get negative 1 half, times the derivative of what's in here, derivative of what's in there is 2x. Close that off. I see some things here. This cancels, right? And so on the top, I have a 1 plus. Now keep in mind what this means. This is the same as a negative exponent. It means I can drop it to the bottom. So I'll put a little 1 over. And then raising something 1 half is the same as square root. So square root x squared minus 12. Then all of that divided by what was on the bottom, which is x plus square root x squared minus 12. That is correct, but I, there's probably more simplification you can do. Let's take a look at what they did for number 9 to, to get to the final answer. Okay, so this is where this is where we were. This was on top of the other one. And then what they did is uh let's see if I can tell what they did there. Mm. Got a com oh, okay, they they got a common uh denominator here, so they multiply top and bottom here by this. And when they did that, they could put the two together. And then on the top, you would have the square root here and then plus x. And that's this part right here. 
on the bottom you would have the common denominator. And then now, when you multiply this times 1, you get the same thing. And then um, you can see that this right here, well, actually, you can see this right here cancels exactly with this, right? So this and this cancel, and therefore you're left with the 1, which is this, over this part, which is this. So there's more simplification you could do. However, you know, I'm, I'm just taking you through the derivative part of this. Okay, on this one, I'm going to use a property that's very similar to the one I used earlier, except with division. If you have natural log of u divided by v, you have, that's natural log of u minus natural log of v. So I'm going to first, before I take a derivative, split this up. This is my u. This is my v. So it becomes natural log 5y plus 1 squared, then minus natural log uh, square root. Remember, we can write as, let's see, y squared plus 1 to the 1 half. Now I'm going to use the property. I can take this power and drop it out front. Take this power, drop it out front. So I will have 2 natural log. 5y plus 1, then minus 1 half natural log y squared plus 1. Now I'm ready for a derivative. So the derivative will be the 2 right here is a constant times natural log of something. The derivative is 1 over that, whatever is in there, times the derivative of what's inside. The derivative of 5y plus 1 is 5, then minus the 1 half. And then again, derivative of natural log of something is 1 over it. And then times the derivative of what's in there, derivative of y squared plus 1 is just 2y. And we can start to put this together. Let's see, the 2 here the two here, and the 5 here multiply give me a 10. So I have 10 over 5y plus 1. And then over here, these 2's cancel. I have a minus. I have a y on top. I have y squared plus 1 on the bottom. So that's this. All right, so this one is a little tricky because it's hard to tell what's happening here. You have natural log of something here. And inside that, you have natural log of something. So this is a double chain rule. You first have to say, what's derivative of natural log of something? Well, derivative of natural log of something is 1 over that something. So the something inside here is natural log 3s. Times, now I'm going to go in here and take derivative of what's inside. So I'm talking about what's the derivative of what's in here. Well, you have natural log of natural log of something again. What's the derivative of natural log of something? Well, it's 1 over that something, but this time it's 3s. And then you say, okay, go inside there. What's the derivative of 3s? Well, that's just 3. And so this 3 and this 3 cancel, and all you're left with is 1 over, I can pull that s out front, s natural log 3s. Okay, more chain rule. We have tangent of something. So the derivative of tangent of something is secant squared of that something, natural log ax plus b. Now times, now I'm done with the tangent, now I'm looking at natural log of something. What's the derivative of natural log of something? Well, it's 1 over that something. Okay, then times the derivative of that something inside there. Derivative of ax plus b is just a. So if you put that together, you get this right here. All right, this one. Check this out. Before I begin, I'm going to rewrite this as the whole thing to the one-half. Notice that our variable in this problem is z, right? That's because of this. So b is just a constant. I'm going to pull the 1 half out. Now I'm going to use the property that says if I have division of a log, I can split it into two logs with subtraction. I just have to make sure I account for that 1 half. So equals 1 half, and then now this splits up into two things, natural log b squared minus z squared minus, now that 1 half is going to distribute through, so 1 half natural log b squared plus z squared. 
And at this point, I'm ready to take derivative. So now derivative, derivative uh, 1 half is a constant. Derivative of natural log of something is 1 over that something times the derivative of what's in here. Now, remember, b is a constant, so I just want the derivative of negative z squared. That's negative 2z. Now I move on to the next one. I have a negative 1 half. Then I have a natural log. Derivative of natural log of something is 1 over that something times the derivative of what's inside here. Again, b is a constant, so I just need derivative of z squared. That's 2z. Should get some, some canceling. These twos cancel. These twos cancel. And so what you get is a negative 1 over b squared minus z squared. And then over here, you still have that negative. So um, I'll say plus, and I'll put a negative on top. Negative, oh, you know what? I forgot the z, the z, oops, z. And on this one, negative z again. But this time on the bottom, it's b squared plus z squared. I wonder if they would put that together and get a common denominator. Let's see, number 13. That's it right here. They did get a common denominator. Um, also, they did something weird here. I have negative z over b squared minus z squared. They moved the negative to the bottom so it becomes a positive z, and instead of b squared minus z squared, I now have z squared minus b squared. <laughs> That's just the way they did it. So um, they get a common denominator here, put things together, and it all turns out to be that. I'll just let you look at how look at that there, so you can see what they did. Okay, on a test, I would be happy with that. That's all right with me. Okay, differentiate this function. All right, so. Let's notice that we have a product right there. So product rule, derivative of 3 e to the x. Well, 3 is a constant, so 3 derivative e to the x is itself. Then times the second function. Product rule plus derivative of the square root of x is 1 over 2 root x. I'm kind of skipping the work for that because we've done it so many times. And then times the uh, second one, which is, or the first one, which is 3 e to the x. Uh, notice here we can, if we want, factor a 3 e to the x out of both. If we do that, we'll have, we're left with square root of x plus 1 over 2 root x. We could get a common denominator here. And um, if we did, we would have to say that's over 1. We'd multiply bottom by 2 root x. We'd multiply top by 2 root x. And so we get 3 e to the x. This 2 root x times root x just gives us 2x. And then over here, I had the, the correct denominator, and then all over um, 2 root x. We could do that. I mean, you could have left it the way it was before I put the denominators together. OK, for this next one, um, this can be a little confusing. Um, what we want to do is try and take derivative. We have a quotient rule, right? We have something on top on the bottom, and we do have some weird chain rule happening here. So let's try our quotient rule. Derivative of the top first. Derivative of e to anything is itself. However, because what's up here is 8u, I need to take derivative of that, and derivative of 8u is 8. Then I say minus the derivative of e to the negative 8u is itself but then times the derivative of what's up there. So derivative of negative 8u is negative 8. That's just derivative of the top. Then times the bottom. Minus now the derivative of the bottom. So derivative of e to the 8u on the bottom is itself times the derivative of, of the 8u, which is 8 plus, now derivative of e to the negative 8u is itself, times the derivative of negative 8u, which is negative 8. Then all of this over the bottom squared, e to the 8u plus e to the negative 8u, all of it squared. And then you can start cleaning things up. So let me see, number 15. 
the algebra of cleaning this up probably gets pretty ugly. So there's the original derivative. Um, you know, maybe I should go through this. There's a lot of things that happen here. Yeah, I'll go through it. All right, so what we have here, this right here, right, that's 8e to the 8u. And then when I put this together, a negative and negative is plus. We have plus 8e um, e to the negative 8u. That's going to be multiplied times e to the 8u plus e to the negative 8u. And then minus, uh, let's see, I have 8 times that, so 8 e to the 8u. Uh, oh, crap, I forgot my quotient rule. Damn it, I'm sorry. I left that off. I, I did derivative of the top times the bottom minus derivative of the bottom. I forgot times the top. E, that would have been a problem. Minus e to the negative 8u. So I just did this as here. Oh, man. That's where I am right there. So this is this. And now this part right here, I have minus 8e to the negative 8u. And then e to the 8u minus e to the negative 8u. And then all over the bottom squared. Let's see. Let's see if there's anything we can do here. Um, I don't see anything obvious right off the bat, but let's just go ahead and distribute. When we do this times this, okay, so I'm going to do FOIL here. I'm going to do that times that, that times that, that times that, that times that. So 8e to the 8u times um, e to the 8u. What happens is because these have the same bases, we add the exponents 8u plus 8u, and that gives us 16. So we have the 8 constant out front e to the 16u. And then when we do the next multiplication, which will be, um, we just did this, we just did this times this. So now we're going to do this times this. Check out what happens here. We get the 8 in front, and it's positive. But then when we, we take the 8u up here and add this, it's really subtracting. So 8u minus 8u is 0. e to the 0 is 1. So that's just that. And then we do the inside multiplication, which is this. Again, we have a plus 8. And then e to the negative 8u, we're going to add that exponent to this one. And again, that's 0, so we get times 1. And then we do our last multiplication, which is this times this, positive uh, 8. And then we add those together. Um, the exponents add up to be negative 16u. All right. Now, on the next one, I'm going to do FOIL here to here. And that's going to be 8e to the 16u. But then there's minus out here. So it's minus 8e to the 16u. Then when I go here to here, when I go here to here, I have the, um, it's a negative 8 because this is a minus. So I have negative 8. And then I have to add the exponents 8u and negative 8u is 0. So you get, again, that. Oh, and the fact that I subtract it makes it a plus. So a couple of things to keep track of there. When I go here to here, I get a negative 8. And then again, I add the exponents, I get a 0. And so that's going to be a 1. But then again, I subtracted it, so it becomes a plus again. And then the last one, I get a negative times a negative, which should be positive. Okay, but then I'm going to subtract it, so it'll be negative, and then I add the exponents. I have the 8 out front. I add the exponents. Gosh, I can't stand that my computer does that. I add these together, I get negative 16u, so e to the negative 16u. And then all over the denominator squared. Okay, what happens here? This one cancels with this one. This one cancels with this one. And so I get 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 is 32. 
If we go back and look at that solution, let me see where it is. Yeah, 32 over all that bottom squared right there. Yuck, huh? All right, leave that there for a second. And then I'm going to erase it. All right, so let's look at this next one. Um, I have addition inside a log, so I cannot split this apart. Um, I'm going to do, um, first of all, the derivative of a natural log of, of something is 1 over that something. I just saw something I could do I think I like more. You know what, I think I'm going to do that more now that I see it. Notice these both have e to the negative x in them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go natural log. I'm going to factor out that e to the negative x out of both of the terms on the inside. That leaves me with the 1 plus x. Now I do have multiplication inside of this log. So what I can do is I can split it into two. Natural log of e to the negative x, then multiplication becomes addition, natural log, of 1 plus x. Oh yeah, this is much cleaner. Now, I have not taken a derivative. Natural log of e, these are inverse functions, they kill each other off, and basically all that falls out is that, so I have negative x, then plus natural log 1 plus x. And now I'm ready to take derivative. So derivative is, derivative of negative x is negative 1, plus derivative of natural log of something is 1 over that something, times the derivative of what was in there, Derivative of 1 plus x is just 1, so I don't really even need that. So that's it right there. I'm really hoping I'm getting close to the end here. Yes, I am. Good, good. Okay, find y prime and y double prime for this. So let me start with y prime. I have product rule. Um, alpha is is the thing here in front of x, and beta is front, in front of the x here. Alpha and beta are just constants. So let's do product rule. Derivative of e to alpha x is itself times the derivative of what was up here. Now, derivative of alpha x is just alpha because alpha is like the number 4. The derivative of 4x would be 4. Okay, so that's the derivative of the first one. Now times the second one. I'm doing product rule. Plus derivative of sine beta x. Derivative of sine beta x is cosine beta x. But then times the derivative of what was in there. So what's the derivative of beta x? It's just beta, because beta is like a number. Well, beta is a constant. And then finish off product rule, so we get e to the alpha x. Now, before I move on and do more, uh, let me notice that they both have e to the alpha x in them. So I'm going to factor out an e to the alpha x. That'll leave me with alpha sine beta x plus beta cosine beta x. That's where I am. That's y prime. Now I need the derivative of that. So again, I have product rule. Here's my product right there. So the second derivative will be the derivative of the first one. So derivative of e to the alpha x is e to the alpha x times alpha. We did that a second ago. Times the second one. So I'm just going to write all that crap right here. Crap isn't a very nice word to use, but, oh well, I'm trying to improve on my language. Um, e to the alpha x times alpha, then times the second one, then plus, now the derivative of everything in here. So there's two terms. Alpha is a constant, so just leave it there. Derivative of sine beta x is cosine beta x, but then chain rule says derivative of the beta x, which is beta. Okay, that's derivative of that. And then plus... Hold on just a second. Derivative first time. Yeah, I'm still working on this derivative of the second one. So that's just derivative of this part. And now plus the derivative of this. Beta is a constant in front, so beta. Derivative of cosine of something is negative sine. So I'm going to come in here and change this to negative sine of beta x. But then times the derivative of beta x, which is just beta and then finish off product rule, e to the alpha x. 
So um, at this point, I can start to try and put things together. So I'm going to realize again that I have an e to the alpha x here, e to the alpha x here. I can pull that out. Gosh, do I really want to distribute that? Let's just look at the solution. I don't, I don't really feel like going through the rest of this one. What number is this? 17. So here's where we were. That line. Let me let me just minimize that. Oh wow, that's really small. get all mine on there. Okay, so our, these are going to be backwards because they do the product rule backwards um, from the way I do it. So I'm looking at this this line right here and I'm comparing it to mine. So I have um, alpha e to the alpha x, that's this. Then alpha sine beta x, alpha sine beta x plus beta cosine beta x right here. Then um, e to the alpha x, here's e to the alpha x, and then minus beta squared sine beta x. So this beta and this beta come together, you get minus beta squared sine beta x, then plus, plus alpha beta cosine beta x, alpha beta cosine beta x. And then what do they do? Yeah, they, they pull the e to the, um, e to the alpha x out, and that would leave you, um, when you do that, it leaves you with this, which is this, then plus this right here with an alpha. So take that alpha and distribute it to these two, and you get this. And some things cancel here. What happens? Oh, you, some of these add together. So these two go together and become two of them. That's it. All right, that's good enough. Um, what's next? Find the equation of tangent line of curve at a given point. So if I want the equation of tan tangent line, I'm definitely going to need to know what m is. So I need the derivative to do that. So let me take derivative. The derivative of this, derivative natural log of something is 1 over that something, x squared minus 3x plus 1, times the derivative of what's inside. Derivative of x squared minus 3x plus 1 is 2x minus 3. And that's just 2x minus 3 over x squared minus 3x plus 1. Now, I want to know what's happening. What's the slope of tangent line at this point? So I want to replace my x with 3 in this problem right here. So to get my slope, I replace x with 3. Let me do that up here. My m will be replace x with 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 3 is 3 over... Let's see, I'm plugging in 3 for x, so 3 squared is 9, minus uh, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1, so that just gives me 3. So the equation of my tangent line is now using that our formula we've been using, y minus y1 equals m, which is 3 times x minus x1, x1 is 3. So that's this right here. And then just distribute through here, 3 goes through, and then 0 doesn't matter. So that's what you get. Okay, use logarithmic differentiation to um, take the derivative. This is really cool, actually. So I'm going to walk you through this. What you do is you start off with... can't get my cursor. You start off with your equation, okay? And then what you do is take natural log on both sides of the equation. Now this, to the one-half, is really just this rewriting this with the square root, taking the square root out and making it one half. But now I've introduced the natural log on both sides. Now by doing that, I'm going to be able to take that one half and pull it out front, which is what the next line has done. The one half came out in front, and then they used the property that if you have log of something divided by something, 
you can turn that into natural log of x minus 3 minus natural log of x to the 8th plus 4. So they split it into two logs with subtraction between them. Then we had a one-half out front. That one-half has to go to both, so you put one-half here. So that's where they get this and this. And now you take um, uh, the derivative implicitly on both sides. So here's your here's your equation, right? Remember, you have to work with the whole equation when you do this. You take the derivative of the left side with respect to y. The derivative of natural log of y is 1 over y times the derivative of what was inside. That's going to be y prime because we're differentiating with respect to x. Another way of writing that would be dy dx. So we did implicit differentiation before, so hopefully that rings a bell. And then they used y prime. Now you say equals, now you take derivative of the right side. So the 1 half stays out front, and then derivative of this, derivative of natural log of something is 1 over it. So here it is, 1 over it. And then derivative of what's inside, which is just 1. Then minus 1 half, that's here. And then derivative of natural log of something is 1 over it, so that's here. Then times derivative of what's inside, which is just this. And then they multiply both sides by y, y here and y on this side. The y's cancel here. And then they just throw y in front of this whole thing, just put it in front. Now, what was y? y was this. So that y is actually here. And then this part is this simplified, getting common denominator and putting it together. I know I've made a mess. So <clears throat> what they did, well, no, they didn't do common denominator. They just distribute 2 through here. You get 1 over 2x minus 6. And then this 2 and this 8, that's going to leave me with a 4 on top, x to the 7th on top. And then on the bottom, all I had was this, so x to the 8 plus 4. So that's, that's this piece right here. OK. Use logarithmic differentiation or an alternative method to find derivative of this. So this one is kind of tricky, but we're going to, we're, I'm going to work it all the way out. I'm going to take natural log y on both sides. I mean, sorry, natural log on both sides. And then I'm going to use the property of logs that this can come out front. So my next line is natural log y equals x natural log cosine 5x. And now I'm ready to take derivative on both sides. I'm going to notice that I have a product rule here. On the left side, derivative is 1 over y, y prime. This is always going to happen. And on the right side, derivative of x is 1 times the other one, which is natural log cosine 5x plus the derivative of this. Derivative of natural log of something is 1 over it, times the derivative of what's inside. What's the derivative of that? Well, that's a little chain rule. What's the derivative of cosine something? Negative sine of that something, times the derivative, times the derivative of what was inside, inside the cosine. What's the derivative of 5x? It's 5, so we have a 5 here also. And then finish off the product rule. Bring in that x from the beginning. Now, um, sine 5x over cosine 5x is tangent 5x, and then we had a negative there. So we're looking at, we've got natural log of cosine 5x, and then this was a minus, I need to figure out why it does that, minus, I had the 5x here, so 5x, and then um, sine over cosine was tangent, so tangent 5x. This equals 1 over y, y prime. Now what I'll do is I'll multiply both sides by y. So on the, on the left side, I get y prime. That's what we're looking for. And then I'm going to just replace this y. Remember, that y is going to distribute, so I need parentheses there. What's y? y is this right here. So I'm going to put it out front, cosine 5x to the x, and then times natural log 
cosine 5x, and then minus 5x tangent 5x. All right, that should be it.